I don't know what I'm looking at now. It's just a big, wet <laughs> fish. You know what they say about gloves. If it doesn't fit, you must have quit. I'm Grand Bench, the Fly Ninja, and you are listening to the Drop Jaw Flies podcast. If our hands were shaped like monkey hands, we had the curled fingers and everything, it'd be awesome. <laughs> Just whatever glove you wanted. Just stick them solid. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Drop Jaw Flies podcast, your source for fly fishing talk, tips, and stories. In this episode, we do a review on all types of fishing gloves for cold weather. A good pair of gloves are critical to your success and enjoyment while on the water. If your hands get wet or cold, and if the gloves don't fit right, that is no good. We cover it all and reveal the gloves that have become our go-to favorite. We hope you enjoy our podcast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and our YouTube channel. I am Chad Nelson, along with Jason RV. Here is today's podcast. All right, guys, welcome to the Drop Jaw Flies podcast. It's Jason and Chad. And today we want to talk a little cold weather fishing and specifically get into gloves. Kind of do a glove review. We're kind of at the end of our fishing season here. Dang it. Jason's in mourning. I'm in mourning. It's a sad day. I wanted to go today. <laughs> I would have if Chad would have, but he's too much business. He has to. <laughs> yeah, we got to balance it out. Fish some days, work some days. <laughs> Anyhow, so instead of fishing, we are filming this podcast today. Um, and we've got some gloves here, a bunch of gloves. And we just want to go through them. We have some that are obviously, we think, better than others. But not just better in general, maybe for certain situations, don't you think, yeah. Jason? Yeah, oh, definitely. Like some of these are good for maybe cool weather. Some when it's just frigid, frigid cold are the way to go. Oh, yeah. Um, so maybe, Jason, just to start off, when you look for gloves... For fishing what are some of the key components to the glove that you look for well I think you hit on it just a bit ago is uh, season dependent or temperature dependent because that early fall you know when it's cold in the morning I will go with just some of my work gloves but I want to have mm -hmm. a really good fit yep and I that's the main thing is how it fits and uh, how it feels on your rod, but but that early season, I'm just looking for something to keep the 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 cold off just a little bit. Yeah, exactly. By late morning, midday, you're probably yeah no gloves on. Exactly. So I don't have that glove here, but it's in a lot of our pictures. Yeah, it's just a black glove, and and it it's adjustable, and it's very easy to get on and off, and I it's a great grip on the rod. Um, I actually brought mine too, and it's right on the other side of the table here in my coat. But uh, it's a it's an Under Armour glove, and it's just a utility work glove. Yeah, tight fitting, has a good grip on the palm. It's just enough to keep the chill off in the morning. By midday, it's gone. If it gets wet, I don't care. Yeah, we're probably talk talking about probably the beginning of October in the morning. By by yep. noon, it's off, and it, it's yep. okay even if it gets wet. It's going to get wet, but it still keeps your hand a little bit warmer. Right. But as you go into November. Yes. And and here's the thing, guys. When, like, it's December now, mid-December. It's dang cold. Our reservoir is half frozen up. When we get up there in the morning and a couple of the local rivers here, it's in the teens, and our reservoir is windy, <laughs> really windy, and that obviously compounds the cold. And so the gloves we use today, we both kind of have a favorite, but Jason, you and I always have at least three pair of gloves in our backpack. You bet. And, you know, if some get cold, you need to layer up, change out. That's the one thing that can really ruin the day is if your hands are numb. I mean, you can't grip the rod. You can't cast if your hands are numb. No, and you, you're, you're probably going to call it quits, sure. You're going to leave early because, you know, you just can't, you can't function if your hands are frozen. 
bottom yeah. line. So what do you do to combat that? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's jump in. Um, so I've got a few pair of gloves sitting on the table here for those watching the video version of this podcast. I want to start out with one pair and that are always in my pack. And these are just a merino wool, kind of like a base layer. But what I like about these, Jason, these stay dry. Mm. Uh, I will not get these wet. But if they do get wet, they still insulate. So these are made by Kuyu. I just have these for hunting. But I would find any pair of merino wool gloves that you can find or polyester, some type of poly blend. And I like these for two reasons. I can just wear them by themselves uh, early morning. Not when I'm fishing, but if I'm just walking from location to location. Gotcha. Want to put my hand into a dry glove. But the other reason I like these two is for super frigid temperatures. I have bigger gloves, and this is the cast steel head. But these merino wool fit right inside this glove, and that makes it super warm. Because this is a waterproof, windproof outer shell. Gotcha. That's another good point. Like if you go buy some gloves like these or, or any glove and you're, you feel like they're too big, you can yeah. put one of these on or, or a pair like these and make it tighter, more snug. Well, so. and what's good about this versus just a ski glove, guys, this is a tight fitting glove, this merino wool base layer. And when I slide it into an outer shell like this cast steel head, it's a tight fit and it's easier to grip the rod than if I was just using a normal ski glove. And yeah. using this layering system, I have found keeps my hand really warm. Yeah. You know what they say about gloves? If it doesn't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> That's right. You'd have to be around in the 90s to know what that was. <laughs> if it doesn't fit or if it doesn't work, you must quit. Uh, we have we have not spared any expense on gloves, Jason. And, and to both of us, gloves are just that important. Well, yeah, because the fishing season really should never end. Um, even when our reservoir uh, freezes over, which uh, I just hate that every year, but we'll be on the Green River or we'll be on another river. And so glove is just so important. So if I go back through the ages from when I first started, um, what, I, what I'm going to remember is the wool gloves that were fingerless. And that kept your hand warm, but they were in your pockets a lot. Yeah. And, and you just couldn't fish like how we do. Yeah. Um, then... So why don't you show a pair, then I'll show a yeah, pair, then you show a pair. Now I had these for quite a while, and this is a Sims. Uh, it's, it's a super warm glove. Uh, you've got protection all the way up here. They're, they're really, the bad thing about these was if you got them wet, your fingers got cold up here. And, and if you did this, it was really hard to strip. Of course, uh, I could move this down. And my hands were pretty warm, but there was hardly any dexterity. And there was no possibility to immerse my hand or if I needed to in the water. Yes. But, you know, it kept me out there longer than the previous pair. And I, I like these, but I just, I probably won't ever use them again. Right. And we'll get into why. Yeah, we'll get into why. And I think one thing Jason and I have both concluded for cold weather fishing is waterproof, waterproof gloves are a must. Yeah, absolutely. They must be waterproof. Uh, for example, here's another pair I picked up this year. Uh, I've tested... I see the other one. Yeah, I've tested four new gloves this year. Now this glove is the Glacier Glove. <clears throat> this is a, a poly nylon outer shell. It is windproof and waterproof. However, this one has the finger slit so you can get your index finger out, your thumb out. It Velcros back into place. Um, but Jason, I just don't really see the point of this type of glove. I know they're popular. A lot of guys use it. But I think what you lose outweighs the benefits of being able to have your finger and thumb access. Yeah, I think uh, this would be good, like we're saying, probably in October. Maybe mm -hmm. when it's just cold in the morning, I wouldn't mind wearing these. They have a, a really good grippy 
surface to hold on to things. Um, I agree, and that's when I used this glove, and I actually really liked it. I guess my point is, if you guys are only going to carry one or two pair of gloves all year, uh, this wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. But it is a great early fall or late fall, early winter glove. Uh, I really like the palm. Let's the rubber, the coating. I like how thin it is. I like the tight fit. I can get a good grip on my rod. Yeah. Well, t let's. So here's the benefits, but what's the price too? I mean, what What would you? How the, much these you, are thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. So yeah, that's not. Not too bad. That's not too bad. But you know, when I I grab a fish out of the water, release a fish. Um, even with these closed water gets in, then my whole hand is wet. And, and there's another thing about these two where you have the slit right here, like I'm right handed. So I'm, I'm gripping my rod with my right hand and I'm usually stripping in through that finger right. and water is just going to fill up in there. So yeah. if, if you're streamer fishing a lot, like we are and it's really cold, that's a, that's a no bueno glove. Yeah, I agree. Hand gets wet after a while. You just have to realize your hand is going to get wet. Now, it still did insulate. Mm -hmm. My hand didn't get super cold. But I don't necessarily like having a wet hand inside a glove. Gotcha. And it, there was this, too, that I noticed. That you have this cuff right here, but the back end is open. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, if you had to reach in, you're going to get water here, but a lot's going to come in. I mean, reach into the water. Yes. Um, if, if, because you think, yeah, you've got nets and everything, but why would you need to reach in the water? Well, a lot of times your fly will get hung up, you know, on maybe on accident or whatever, on a piece of sage brush and yep. <laughs> you might have to reach in. <laughs> <laughs> it did happen. Yeah. Water got in both, both places in, in different cases. And so. I'd say good, good for the price, but not the best. Gotcha. Well, I wouldn't mind wearing those in in early October. No, no problem. You know, maybe yep. even June when it's cold up in the high country. I'd, I'd wear that. Yeah, I think uh, for all the gloves we have here, Jason, these were my number three. Now, uh, our list is by no means extensive. What we're going to run through here. I just want to put this on really quick and. This is a five weight rod, an old one that I only have the butt section to, but it's kind of most five weight grips are like this and this half wells type grip. I, my thumb is kind of resting on that. Yeah. It feels interesting, but I'd still do it. <laughs> I, I'd still use it. For well, and bucks. I think uh, we're kind of comparing all these to what we're going to get to as our favorite glove. Right. And so, you know, that. That's tough for Glacier Glove here, but good glove, good okay. glove. I I don't regret buying these. So on that note, from the same company, um, this is from Glacier Glove too, and if I remember right, this is the Ice Bay Glove, and it is fully waterproof. And I think you had a pair of these too. I do. Um, they M do have. Mine were too smelly to bring. And this <laughs> yeah. this might be the stinkiest oh. podcast Come on, be, be we've be ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's a tip, guys. <laughs> well, I used these for the last, geez, probably since what they came out um, because they were fully waterproof and they had a really good tight fit. But well, maybe I'll get into this with our pair we end up with. But anyway, micro fleece, and they were fully waterproof. I just washed my hand from sticking it in another glove that didn't stink very, uh, that was not very pleasant. But anyway, okay, so after the use, I don't know if you can see that hole in the seam, and then from lots of stripping, it wore a, a really nice groove in, in here, but I was able to use these at the coldest times of the year and my hands were cold. I will say that, but I still could fish. Mm -hmm. So the grip with these and the dexterity was, was pretty good. These, the, the fingers from my middle finger on down, ring finger, pinky finger, these are really loose. And so the grip wasn't the greatest and I don't know. They they allowed me to fish in the winter whenever I wanted to, but they weren't perfect. 
So, and, and that's really the reason I don't wear mine anymore, Jason, is the loose fit. Yeah. You just got to have a tight fitting glove that's going to keep your hand warm, but still tight enough that you can strip your line in, that you can cast. When when I have a loose glove on my hand, I just can't cast. It's it's hard for me. Right. Well, <laughs> let me show you this. These were a large, and my hand is really a, a medium hand, and these still... My fingers are, are coming to the, the end right here, so there's no room. So if I was to get a medium, it would be uncomfortable. That's why I got the large, but then it yep. didn't it wasn't ideal. So anyway, that was that glove. And they didn't last very long, but if I had to, I'd go back to them. I think they were thirty five dollars. Yeah. And that's reasonable for a good pair of fishing gloves. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't I, they worked okay. But going back to your point about a, a tight fit or a really good fit, um, when you're throwing these large flies and you're hauling a lot and you you come forward really hard on your forward cast, you put a lot of torque and force, it's so easy for your thumb to slip off and you, you lose everything. Yes. And so that's why you got to have a, uh, a glove that really connects well. The other thing that happens is ice develops really quickly on your grip. It does. And so it's you got to have a really nice grip with your thumb to be able to make your forward cast and keep it on the back cast. So especially for this guy <laughs> and, and this guy where... The force that you is tremendous on on the forward and the back cast, and it's it's just easy to slip off. So good grip is just necessary. Well, and and I can count a lot of times, Jason, doing uh, my forward haul, you know, doing a double haul, and the line slips out of my left hand, the hand I'm hauling mm -hmm. with, because the the line is cold and icy, and my glove, you know, using different gloves, it just slipped off. Oh, so yeah. to your point. The glove has to have a good rubber grippy palm to be able to cast with. Yeah. Yeah, that would have gone through. I don't know if you can see the groove, but it's a pretty good groove. It's down into the fleece on the inside. So I probably would have got another few trips out of these before. Yeah. Except for that. <laughs> <laughs> Big tear in it. Yeah. Okay, here's another pair of glove. Um... I've actually used these for two seasons now. I picked these up almost two years ago. This is the Cabela's Guidewear. And these are 29 bucks, I believe, 30 bucks right now. And these are a pretty decent glove. The only drawback to these, they're not waterproof. Uh, they're water resistant, they're wind resistant, they're breathable. They have a nice rubber grip on the palm. And these are a size medium. All of my gloves are medium. And you can see these have a pretty decent fit. Not quite as snug as I would like, but a pretty decent fit. Huh. Yeah, these aren't, these aren't bad. There, you can feel the seams in them. Yeah. Which would bug me after a while. But. Yeah, a little bit. And, you know, these fit as well as any of this style of glove that's kind of a nylon outer shell. It's not yeah. a rubber glove that's going to give you a tight fit but for a nylon shell that's got a, a wind stopper in it these have a pretty decent fit so for 30 bucks now as far as warmth goes these are good for late fall early winter but in the frigid temps that we're seeing right now here in salt lake city utah my hand would be cold in these hmm let me try that one on let me see how that would so it's a micro fleece lining um, so warmth is average, I'd say, but not great for sub-freezing temps. And I'm, I'm jamming my thumb up into the top again, which some people might not care, but I don't like that feeling <laughs> all day. Well, that's one of the drawbacks to gloves, and you got to consider this, guys, that are stitched, right? And that's what you're feeling jamming into the top of your thumb there is right. the stitching. Well, and so is this a medium? This is a medium, yeah. Okay, so I'm topped out here on all fingers, and I have a 
a medium sized hand so if anybody wants to buy these and you have a hand bigger than mine which would be hard to tell <laughs> you better buy a large I, I don't I would wear these in the uh, in that early part of the, the cold season yeah sure. late late fall early winter not a bad glove for 30 bucks and one thing I'd say too I've got another pair here I'm gonna get to in a minute but it's a good grip um, the reason I own all of these gloves with the exception of one pair is because I was able to find them at my local sporting goods store or fly shop and try them on and I think that's critical because as we're going to get to in a minute not all gloves fit the same I own six pair of gloves they're all medium one of them kind of fits like a large but I wasn't able to find it at my local store and try it on I took a chance and ordered it online and I'm not happy with the fit so Try them on if you can. Go to your local store and, and try them on. Yes. So <clears throat> here is another type of glove that a lot of you guys probably already have. It's a ski glove, snowmobile glove, or whatever. Um, if you go in the back country like we do, uh, and you're coming back from the fishing and your gloves are all wet, and it's just good to have a pair of these in your backpack so you can take the wet ones <clears throat> off and put these on and then have a comfortable hike out or if you get stranded you don't want to spend the night in your fishing gloves i mean get something heavy to carry with you but so i did have to fish uh with these a few times because i had forgot my other gloves and we were <laughs> seven miles in and i'm not gonna not fish and so if you decide to fish in your waterproof ski or snowmobile gloves um it's not going to be fun. Your hand and your forearm is going to get so tired because the fit is so sloppy. Yeah. You can't grip. It's just too bulky and too big. So that's that's pretty much why guys don't fish in these. But if you have to, you have to, you know. Well, I'll echo that point, Jason. If you're going deep, hiking in a ways, you've got to have a pair of those in your pack. It's just critical because most likely your hands are going to get wet. Now, even our favorite waterproof gloves you got to take them off at some point to tie a new fly on or or do something yeah and hands get wet and cold to have a big pair of warm ski gloves to hike out in is just a must yeah these these are great to travel into i know a lot of times we're on your machine or we're doing other things where just hiking to the water sometimes it's just good to have these then you're not sweating in your fishing gloves and right. getting them all wet so a good pair of safety gloves is what i would call these but if you try to fish in these and it's not going to be pretty <laughs> <laughs> it's doable but not ideal yeah i remember doing that a few times last year and oh forearm everything trying to hold the rod and grip it tight enough and it just doesn't work so yeah so that was um Last winter was my, my first winter fly fishing, and I didn't have all these gloves then, but that was the one thing I noticed the most, or right away most apparent to me in cold weather fishing, was the difficulty with certain gloves I was using, trying to grip the rod, and how tired my forearm was at the end of the day <laughs> in my hand. So uh, one system I used last year was these merino wools inside a shell, it kept my hand warm, but it took a lot more effort to actually grip the rod and do all that casting. Yeah. And I had to take breaks during the middle of the day. I, I hadn't built up my fly fishing arm strength yet. <laughs> gotcha. Well, yeah, and the, the bigger that your hand has to be to grip the rod, you know, it's just it's too tiring and too fatiguing. So if our hands were shaped like monkey hands, we had the curled fingers and everything, it'd be awesome. <laughs> Just whatever glove you wanted. But uh, Well, to that point, point out the difference between your two hands. Oh, yeah. Well, this, this is a, a 10 weight. Uh, this is a 5 weight. Usually you get the, you're going to get the half wells grip on, on your smaller rods. Um, and on a 10 weight, obviously, uh, we're fishing for trout, but um, these flies are just swamp tarpon flies and usually use a 10 to 12 weight for a tarpon so we need the heavier line to throw these flies and so 10 weight rod you're going to get a bigger grip even on your eight weights um 
you're going to get this full wells just bigger in circumference. And so it takes up more for my hands are, are on the smaller side. So to have a big glove like this or even some of the other gloves, it's just fatiguing with a whole day of repetitive casting. And so the glove that I kind of uh, found last year works sweet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> works really sweet. So... When, Absolutely. Whenever you want to reveal it, we can pull them out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two more, but oh yeah. Let's pause for one sec. I got to grab something. Edit. <clears throat> Balls. All right, Jason. Just a couple more gloves to get into. So we showed these gloves earlier, and these are the cast steelhead gloves. And I was really excited to try these out. I've heard a lot of good yeah. reviews on these. Um, the problem is I couldn't find these in any of our local sporting goods stores or uh, fly shops. And so I just had to order these online. Now, a couple things to love about these gloves. One is the grip and the palm. Super nice rubber. Uh, super grippy, sticky whatever you want to call it, but you can get a good grip on your rod. Um, these gloves have the patented out-dry membrane, so these are uh, waterproof, windproof, all of that. And I've only had a chance to use these twice. I actually just got them last week. Hmm. And I hurried and ordered them so I could try these out. So, stuck my hand in the water several times. These are, they're waterproof. They stay dry. I like the how you fasten around the wrist here. Um, you can get a nice good sealing either inside your coat or outside your coat. Gotcha. The one thing I was disappointed about with these gloves though, these are a medium too, mm -hmm. as are all of these other ones, but these fit almost like a large. Well, not quite, because my fingers are to the end of the glove. So as far as length goes, these are a true medium. But you can see how baggy these are, how much room there is inside. And I found after using these for two hours, Jason, I took them off because I was frustrated because it was hard to get a good grip on the line when I was stripping. Gotcha. Hard to get a good grip while I was casting. So if you're casting a lot, I could see maybe other guys getting a little frustrated with how baggy the fit is and it's not a nice snug fit to where you can get a good grip on your line and on your rod well i when i put these on my thumb is jammed up in here already and just mm. like this brand it's i feel the seam and i don't like that um but what i noticed was awesome about these is the on off is mm -hmm. is just perfect i mean there there's no effort to get that on and when you need to close it up it has that nice adjustment to fit anybody's arm so i did like that but just what you were saying about the stripping and casting it does have a really good grip and we should say chad we are not endorsed by any of these companies it's totally unbiased information yes. we're not yeah. being paid by anybody here so Hopefully that will you know make people rest assured <laughs> that we're not biased over one glove over the other. But um, warmth, great warmth. warmth, quality. I can see these gloves lasting years. Oh yeah, um, you can see they're really well made. Um, I'm definitely going to keep them because I can see a lot of different situations where I would use these gloves. I think just in general winter use, these would be awesome. Like mm -hmm. you could almost use these for almost <laughs> snowmobiling in the coldest weather and, and stuff like that. It, I think it's a great glove. It's just, it might not be ideal for stripping streamers. Right. Um, it's dang close. Yeah. It, it, it would beat all the other gloves in so many other categories, but it's just... The dexterity issue with trying to pull in that skinny line const constant line. we do that all day long yes. cast strip cast for yeah. hours and hours and so yeah i should clarify yeah for what we do it's it's not the perfect glove not my favorite but if i was nymphing uh even dry fly fishing yeah 
Yeah, I don't, I don't see any problem with these other than just that issue of casting and stripping. It is a little bulky. It's not unlike my ski glove. I don't know where that went. Not, not as bulky, and it is a tighter fit, but I think it would be a now, challenge. If, if we're out fishing and it's 20 below, which we've done before, mm. I would probably use these gloves in conjunction with these merino wool as a base layer. As I've said many times, I mean, if it's 20 below, you're going to have bulky gloves on your hand to keep you warm. You bet. And I could see this system with the merino wool base layer and this cast steel head as the outer. That would be a really warm system. And that merino wool takes up some of the slack inside these gloves. And I like that setup right there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, true to fit for medium, for me, I think it was spot on. And these gloves cost eighty dollars, basically seventy nine dollars. And yeah, would I pay for it? Yes. Do I think they're worth it? I do. I, I think this you're gonna get years and years out of this glove. You, I can, after all the years, decades, I should say, of using gloves in the winter, this this one will will last. It's just and right now these are the best smelling gloves we have up there. <laughs> Nice. That is a that is a dang nice glove. Where it's fully waterproof and everything, it just yeah. You know, after using that and putting it on, and there is one that I do prefer. Yeah. Over that one. So we we both do, and it's kind of been our go-to for how we fish. So this is the Sim Skina. Um, we and I've used these a lot, and so is Chad. If we if we had both of these pairs of gloves in here, we'd have to evacuate the house because they. <laughs> I had to leave mine in the other room. The smell was just unbearable. And that's that's the problem. Like if you had waterproof socks made out of neoprene and you wore them all the time, they would stink, and these stink because. But let's let's go through these, Chad. No, let's let's go through the drawbacks. And, okay. and then we'll so the price is 39 bucks for these sim skina so that's a very reasonable price and i think it's it's worth its weight in gold this glove for what you get again for streamer fishing yeah so i'll talk a little I'll, I'll talk a little bit about getting these on um these are easy to get on very tight when they're dry when you first start using them they are Easy to get on and off. They're, they are very tight here at the cuff, which I like, but getting them on, I'm going to sacrifice my skin. Uh, I'm not putting your glove on. <laughs> I, I almost did. <laughs> okay, so here's some of the wear issues of, of one year. So I have to stretch this out quite a bit to get this on. And you can see that it, mm. it's these se uh, seams. This has been heavy use. I don't think guys Two seasons. Yeah. wear these and use them like mm. we do because we're out all the time. But um, now that it's on, you can see I've got a, a rip here. I've got a big rip here. Uh, I have stripped line through these and worn all the way to my finger. And on, so I had to start stripping on the middle finger and it's almost cut through to my skin as well. <laughs> and then of course the thumb is chewed from grip and holding ice. But having said that, this is a, you can see how skin tight this is. Yeah, it's a gasket cuff. Um, it really seals your wrist. So when you stick your hand in the water um, without all the holes in Jason's gloves, it keeps the water out. Um, the the fleece and the pattern in here, uh, let's see if I can pull this out. It has a checkerboard, like raised pieces, raised parts. It looks like a checkerboard and some of like the white parts are raised. And it lets heat travel and, and trap heat on your skin. Yeah, so they call it a grid fleece. Even, yeah, even in the coldest weather, and they're black too, so when the sun's out, you do get some, some heat on there. But mm. the dexterity is incredible. Uh, it's, I can almost tie knots with the 20-pound fluorocarbon that we use with yeah. my glove on. And as far as gripping and casting... It's just, there isn't anything that's that's that tight. There's no thumb roll. 
there's hardly any of that and totally able to to grip grab keeps my hand warm and you can put your hand all the way in the water and I've done this too this is is pretty dang tight and I've put my hand in the water and just minimal amounts can even bypass that right that gasket cuff so the the downside is it is so tight that getting them on and off they do wear that's that's where these issues come in between the fingers and this is again is after two seasons of use but pulling the glove off it's so tight look at yeah <laughs> and so that's probably the the way i would do it now is that reach your thumb into here, but you, you know, you're gonna get it wet, but that's how I would do it. And at the end of the day, you have to- Turn them inside turn them out. Turn them inside out. And reach in there. <laughs> Holy smokes, Chad, what, let's go burn this after. <laughs> so I don't know that these are breathable. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one thing you got to remember to do is flip them inside out and let them air out because your hands will retain a little moisture uh, yeah. after we use them 10 hours straight throughout the day. But yeah, reach in there, get some forceps and pull the fingers out and dry them thoroughly. This grip on the palm, they call it a shark skin texture and it works really well as Jason was just describing. In some cases, it's almost too good trying to cast with it and let the line shoot through your hand <laughs> yeah you, you can't do it i just when i do my forward haul i just have to let go of it right but but <clears throat> so the really key thing when you're stripping with gloves is a light hit on a fish you have to be able to react super quickly and you can get a really good grip on the line with these mm -hmm. and and set the hook and so it is a softer material, and I have worn all the way through it, stripping line through it. But again, I mean, we we use these a, a lot, and so... Ton. And, and to your point, Jason, being able to get a, a good grip on the line and set the hook or whatever, that's kind of where you miss on these shell-type gloves. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> So these are 40 bucks. Um, you know, the value uh, for what you get with, with these, like you buy two pair of these and one pair of these, and I'm going to go through another pair of these in a season easy, whereas these you could have, I'm, I guess, probably hard use. I, I don't know. We, it's yet to be seen how tough this material is for stripping through it. Yep. But... Yeah, again, I've only had these a week, and... The only blemish on it is a little snot from my nose. And <laughs> well, I think those have lasted a decade. I really do. That's the feel I get from those. Yeah. So these are not going to last that long, but for $40 and for what use I got out of it, I would buy these every year. Every year, I think that's worth 40 bucks for those Sim Skeena. So for us, that's the number one, uh, hands down. So uh, Sims... If you're watching, or if someone could uh, tell you, there's there are some improvements that could be made, but so far, all the gloves I've ever used in cold water fishing, below zero fishing, this was this is the way to go. Yeah, I think we could do a better job of avoiding, especially around this gasket cuff, taking them off. I think we're responsible for putting a lot of pull on that right the the one thing i don't know what sims could do is from stripping this soft rubber this soft neoprene over time the line wore that right yep. through the finger so maybe that's a quality issue sims could fix i don't know the the stink <clears throat> um that's our responsibility a lot of it too uh <laughs> Be, but keeping them mm -hmm. totally waterproof and submersible with that dexterity because this is just awesome range of movement yeah and they're so comfortable that i would buy them mm -hmm. every year so i don't know right. if there's one thing that maybe they could do is improve the stripping portions of the maybe the, the right. index finger the middle finger and the thumb maybe they could beef up the bottom a little bit <laughs> but a really good design for forty dollars yeah Thumbs up. 
Uh, so guys, two other <laughs> gloves you might consider. Uh, we haven't used, but I know they're out there on the market. Patagonia has one out that is a very similar design to this Simskina. They call it the R1. And it's $39 just like this Simskina. We haven't used it, but it's supposed to be comparable. So if you love Patagonia, that might be one you want to check out. And then Sims has one they came out with a year ago, I believe. And it's called the G4 Glove. Right. Gore-Tex Extra Fit. It's $120. Bucks. So that's spendy. And I guess it's supposed to be somewhat like this cast steelhead. Again, we haven't used it, but it's out there. And you could check that glove out too. Yeah, this... This is an excellent glove. Uh, you, you can just tell from the, the quality of it. Um, we'll have to really put this to the, the test and strip through that. Because mm -hmm. that's the only weakness I can see other than maybe the grip for my hand. Somebody else might fit that better. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, all right, guys, that's our review on cold weather gloves for winter fishing. Uh, please send us your feedback. If there's other gloves out there we didn't talk about, we haven't used, that you absolutely love, let us know. We'd love to check it out. And as always, thanks for listening, and remember to stick, stick them em solid. solid. All right, friends, thanks for listening to the Drop Jaw Flies podcast. Please send us your feedback. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook and on our website, www.dropjawflies.com. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or on our YouTube channel. Now get out there and hook a big one and stick them solid.